Once you've downloaded and installed DaVinci Resolve, we're going to go ahead and open it up. First thing you're going to do is come to the screen. This is where you're going to set up your project name and all that. We're just going to hit New Project. You can name it Stabilize. And when DaVinci Resolve opens the main software, you're going to come to this, which is going to be the cut page. On DaVinci Resolve, you're going to see you got seven tabs down here. It's your media tab. This is where you can import all your footage if you want to. I don't use it a lot because I'm typically only working with one or two clips at a time. So I really don't mess with this. The cut screen, the cut page is where you're going to drag in your footage when you're doing one or two clips. This is where I drag my stuff in to get started off. Your edit page, this is where you're going to be doing a lot of the uh, retiming and stuff like that. So if you see parts of my videos where it's normal speed, then it slows down, then it goes back. Stuff like that is done right here in the edit page. Fusion is the page we'll be working on our tracking in. This is where all the tracking effect is done. Super easy, super straightforward. I'm going to show you how to do that. Color, if you want to adjust the color of your video. I don't do a lot of that because I don't shoot in logs, so I don't have a lot of flexibility with color, exposure, and all that stuff. So I just do basic little things like maybe saturation, you know, a little contrast, basic stuff. We're not going to worry about that in this video. Um, fair light is audio. That's if you want to get really fancy with audio. I hardly ever mess with this tab. And deliver, this is where you're going to export your video. To get started, we're going to go back to the cut page. And I, on my other screen over here, just have a file explorer open with a video clip that I want to use. So I'm just going to click on it and drag it right into this section here. Now, if you double click on it, you can play in this little window right here and it'll show you what the video looks like if you hit the space bar and play it. Now you can see this is really, really shaky. It's all over the place. But what I do try to do when I'm shooting, this is handheld, of course. I don't use a tripod. Even though I have one, I don't use it for some reason. What you want to do is give yourself room in the frame where the frame can shift around without cropping the plane off and stuff like that. Because what this software is going to do is just constantly move the frame around, pretty much cropping frame by frame to get the jet or whatever you're tracking right in the center of the frame. It makes it look super stable when you're done with it. You'll see that in a second. So first off, we're gonna select the part of this clip that we wanna use. So if I play this from the beginning, I can trim a little bit of the beginning off and probably a little bit of the end. So we'll probably go about, you know what, let's leave the beginning. I like how it turns into it. So we're going to go right there, let it play, let it play, and let's stop it about there. And we'll hit O. Now you can set in and out points on your video by just hit the I on your keyboard and it'll set an end point. And you do the same when you get to the end of the part of the clip you want to use. You hit O and that's your out point. And whatever section you have selected in between there is what's going to drop into your timeline. So once we have our in and out selected, we're going to click this little thing here, this little icon here that says a pin. And that's going to drop our selected piece of this clip onto our timeline. Now we're going to jump into the edit page. Now right here, the first thing I like to do is you can see my audio is pretty much maxed out here. I didn't adjust the audio in my camera because I'm just starting to mess with the camera. So I haven't really gotten that far into it. But I'm going to hit normalize audio levels and that's going to bring it down to a pretty normal level. So it'll be a little bit quieter. Now what we want to do is get into stabilizing. So make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the clip. We're going to go to fusion. You're going to hold control. This is on a PC. I'm not sure of the Mac command. You have to look that up, but control, hold control and hit space. And that's going to bring up a tool menu here. You're going to type P L A N. And as soon as you see planar tracker pop up, click on that and hit add. Now we're at the beginning of our clip. The first thing you want to do here is hit set. Since we didn't trim any of the beginning of the video off, it's going to be set at a reference time of zero anyways, but I'm going to click it. If you had trimmed any of the beginning of the video off and you forget to hit set, it's not going to let you start tracking. So make sure you do that. We're going to go ahead and hit set. Then we're going to go to tracker, make sure that's on point. Motion type, translation, output, background, and track channel, Luma. All that is fine. Now we're going to make our little selection. So we're going to click right above the jet. Click over here and we're just drawing a box around the jet. Just like that. Now you're going to hit this play button here and as soon as you hit this, move your mouse over to the stop button because there's going to be times where you want to stop and adjust your selection so it doesn't have a hard time tracking the jet. So we're going to play, let it run forward a little bit. And it's okay if a little bit of the jet is outside of your selection, that's not going to hurt anything. So as the jet turns here, you're going to see it starts getting a lot smaller inside of the selection box. So what I like to do is stop it here, bring these points in a little bit, like 
like that. Go ahead and play it again. It's coming around the corner. Still tracking pretty good. And the jet is still staying a pretty good size to stay inside of our selection box, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. And we're just gonna let this one play out. And that's it. Now once the tracker is finished running, you're gonna come up here to operation mode, you're gonna change track to stabilize. Now depending, you'll see how the frame moved a little bit. Now if we come back to our edit page, start at the beginning, you'll see the black space around the frame is moving around. That's where it's actually moving your video to keep the jet in the center. Pretty neat. So the next thing we're gonna do is our retiming and getting a slow getting the slow motion spots in the video so for this you're going to hold control and hit r that'll bring up your retime controls and i like to right click on this and hit the retime curve as well so that can that gives you the ability to really mess with and dial in the speeds down here so we're going to hit the space bar to play and i'm going to play forward to a spot where i want it to slow down i'm going to hit space and right about there let's back it up a little bit let's go right there I'm going to click this little down arrow and hit add speed point. Now we'll play ahead to where we want it to stop. Let's get back a little bit. Playback can be a little choppy sometimes, depending on your footage. We'll go about right there and we're going to hit add speed point again. And this section here is where we're going to slow down. So we're going to hit this little down arrow again. And I'm going to uncheck pitch correction because pitch correction sounds really weird. It sounds like just metallic tin high pitch stuff. So I usually turn that off. Then I'm going to click it again and change speed. And I'm going to put it at 25%. Now I'm going to come down here and you'll see this little line. This is the speed. This is a, a graph of the speed right here. So you can see where it's 100% and right here it drops down to 25. I'm actually going to grab this. When you see these two arrows pop up, I'm going to grab this and drag it down to about 18.2. And we're going to let that play. And then you see it gets to that really really buttery turn yeah that's pretty so coming out of the turn it'll speed back up perfect so now that we got our little speed section set up what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back we're gonna reframe our shot again manually so we don't have the black space on the edge and we're punched in a little bit more so you can see the jet better we're gonna go back to the beginning of the video and we're gonna go ahead and click this button right up here and that's gonna set a keyframe on your position zoom all of the stuff that positions the frame we're gonna do that set the keyframe then i'm gonna zoom in a little bit move it on the x-axis move it down on the y zoom in a little bit more something like that then we're gonna push play Then right there where it starts to make that turn, I want to zoom in a little bit more and reposition it. Zoom in, move it over to x-axis a little more. And I like to right click on these two and do ease in. And that'll make it a little bit smoother as it transitions from one position or one zoom level to the next. So we'll play that back and see what it looks like. So that's pretty sweet. Slow motion afterburner is just awesome. Now you can see the plane starts to get kind of small here in the frame again. So we're going to zoom a little more. Slide it to the right a little bit. Slide it down. Do ease in. Both of those. And then it'll play out. Now that looks pretty good to me. And we'll go ahead and close all these. Control R to turn off the retime. And then click this little button here and that'll turn off the uh, curve so you have a little bit of a more simple view to work with and what I like to do is drag in an adjustment clip and put it over top of the video now usually when you're working with a single clip like this you can just do the adjustments on the clip itself but it's good practice to go ahead and start using adjustment clips instead of trying to individually edit clips because you never know how you're gonna end up ed editing stuff and adjustment clips are awesome at least in my opinion so we're gonna select our adjustment clip and hit the color tab and we're just going to go to the middle of the video somewhere right there see what that looks like and i'm going to go to primaries and color wheels we're going to do the offset i'm going to bring that up a little bit 
Highlights I'm going to bump up just a little bit. Shadows up just a little bit. Saturation bump it up just a little bit. And a little bit of contrast. And sometimes I like to warm the pictures up a little bit. Something like that. It just looks more dramatic to me. Now we can click on our curves here. And I click on this Y so it's just the pretty much lightness and darkness. And drag down a little bit. Create a little more contrast. Bring the highlights up a little bit. Something like that. Let's see what that looks like. Now, as you can see in the beginning of the video, the highlights are a little bit strong. Let's go back there. See, that's a little bit washed out. So I'm going to bring my gain. Bring that down a little bit. And highlights, drop that down just a little bit. Something like that. See how that looks. That looks pretty good. I can live with that. Now all we have left to do is export our video. So for this, we're going to go to the Deliver tab. Now I have a custom export, which this is not hard to do. You can select uh, just YouTube 1080 if you want to, to keep it easy. But you can take a look at the settings I have right here, advanced settings. I haven't really messed with any of those, but I'm going to pull them up so you can see it. Subtitle settings. Yeah, none of that matters to me what I do. Um, but what I do is switch format to MP4, codec, H.264, encoder, auto, resolution. For uh, reels and stuff like that, I'll usually leave it, leave it at 1920 by 1080, or actually it'll be 1080 by 1920. You can hit that and use vertical resolution, and it's going to crop it. But we're not going to do that right now. Quality, automatic is set to best. So all that stuff's pretty standard. And once you're ready, you're going to hit Add to Render Queue, and we're going to name it uh, Stabilize. Hit Save, and then over here you'll see the Render Queue, and we'll hit Render All, and it's going to render your video. All right, and that's pretty much it. So to finish off this video, I'm just going to let a side-by-side -side of the stabilized versus unstabilized video play, just so you have a comparison to look at. And uh, if you have any questions about what I did here, or if I missed anything, or didn't explain anything very well, please let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. If there's anything else that I do that you would like to know about or know how I do it, let me know that in the comments as well. Thank you all for watching. Have a great one, and I'll see you on the next video.